Hello and welcome to the October edition of Cyclone Weekly's Tech of the Month. And before we get into the tech of this month, we've actually got quite an exciting month ahead with videos. We've, we're attempting the Red Bull time lapse. <laughs> How you got out of that, I do not know. Um, but that's coming in a couple of weeks. And we're going to do some more roundup videos of the hottest e-bikes and gravel bikes launched this year. I'll go first. I've got something very new indeed. Launched at World Champs, this did. Yes, just last week. Just last week. It is the Laser Genesis. Look how sleek that looks. It it's does a, look nice, doesn't it? It's Batman's helmet. It is Batman's yeah. helmet. <laughs> so the Genesis, as I'm sure you all know, was a helmet quite a few years ago that was then superseded by the Z1. And now the Laser Genesis exists, bringing back that old name, is a new model. And as you can see, it's compatible with a windshield, just like the Z1, which I'm going to try and get off now, which actually... Oh, hey, hey, that is, my right these guys have actually done. That is the fastest <laughs> I've been able to do that of any time. Uh, it does grip on incredibly well. There are no clips, there's no magnets or anything. It just sits on and has an amazing seal. Great for winter riding, um, yes. as well as in some sort of aerodynamic benefit. Exactly. As long as it stays on slightly better than it did on the Z1. Where you'd be riding along and then all of a sudden it goes <laughs> to <laughs> off your head. You have to like, a, try and find it in a parachute on the <laughs> top of your head. <laughs> that um, was a problem. So this is it revealed. Um, it's a nice looking lid. It's a very nice looking lid. It looks a lot like the Z1. But that's There's no, no bad thing. There's no yeah. bad thing. The Z1 was a good looking helmet. It has mm. loads of vents and that was a big thing. So this was developed in conjunction with uh, lasers pro athletes and they said we want a lighter helmet and we want a cooler helmet they didn't really want they weren't that bothered about aerodynamics they were just like make it lighter make it cooler so that's what they did so this all these vents are meant to like optimize the cooling so where the wind goes in and goes over the top of the head it's got these big channels on the inside but the main thing about this helmet is it is the lightest helmet that laser have ever made um, so this is a size medium Laser claimed it would weigh 199 grams. It actually came in at 205 on our scales. Was that with the lid? That was without, without the lid. Right, okay. Yeah, so without the lid, 205 grams in a size medium. No MIPS either. Um, the old Laser Z1 was about 20 grams heavier than that. So it is light, it's the lightest helmet they make. Um, and it's also lighter than the Giro IFA, which had MIPS when we tested it, but that was 65 grams heavier than this. So um, it is a very light helmet. It does, but there is a MIPS version, right? Correct. Yes. There are two versions of this. One without MIPS, what I have here, uh, that retails for £169.99, and one with MIPS, which retails at £189.99. So there are actually a load of pros that are going to be riding this next season when the racing kicks off again. Uh, Jumbo Visma, um, Team Sunweb and Corridon Circus, that are obviously Matthew van der Poel's team. Great, okay, well I'm going to go next with my product which is two saddles um, from Physique. Um, well, one new saddle range should I say, so it's the new Argo range which has two saddles which is the Tempo and the Vento. One is the Endurance saddle which is the Tempo, tempo. you've been riding that, yes, uh, which is here. There you go. Uh, and then I've been I've started to ride this one but haven't had too much time with it which is the Vento which is the racing saddle um, so the sort of the, the differences are um, this has a, a, a sort of drop-off nose at the front uh, and it has like their type 1 foam which is a bit firmer a bit more dense um, to support you in the aggressive position whereas yours has a type 2 foam from physique um, which is a bit softer uh, and has way more cushioning around the sit bones um, which is kind of what you know a more endurance style fit would would be, yeah. kind of a bit more laid back, a bit more upright, um, and doing that. So, how have you found your saddle so far? Well, I did trial by fire on this, and my first ride was 110 miles down to the coast and back, and I was so impressed. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a great saddle. Like it was very very comfortable and supportive as well. But yeah, that shorter style works really really well yes and it's kind of that is the popular sort of style for saddles now isn't it so you know i i was a big fan of the physique arion saddle which is long and flat um i could change position on it that was kind of how i i 
I wanted to ride. Um, I tried a few of the sort of stubby nose saddles, like the Power, for example, and just couldn't get on with them. And it, it's, it seems to be a trend that you, sh you need to get your position pretty spot on to sort of get on with the, the shorter nose saddles, um, especially the Power, because that was, that was really short when it first came out um, and it had quite a big flare in the side. Uh, these don't seem to be so dramatic no. um, compared to that. Um, but it's interesting that Physique have sort of, they've gone away, they've gone very quiet on the whole chameleon, ball and snake style fit. Um, you don't really get that on here. Um, you know, you kind of got the, the racing saddle or the endurance saddle. Um, so these versions are uh, the R1, um, which is their top flight carbon railed um, saddle, as you can see at the bottom. Uh, and the R1 for the Vento is 179.99 and the Tempo is 184.99. Oh, um, so it's a bit more. bit more expensive. Uh, and they come in uh, another version, which is the R3, which is uh, made of their own sort of proprietary aluminium rail. And interestingly, I've been using the wider one as well. Okay. And normally I'd go for like a sort of slightly narrower saddle, but I didn't have any issues with that at all. So, really? Yeah, okay. it was really, really comfortable. Right. Because that seems to be another sort of quite popular thing for saddles and brands to, to get behind and that's sit bone width and making sure you have the right support there. Um, so it's something for you guys at home. If you're looking for a new saddle to find out your sit bone width and see what works for you. Um, especially if you're going for the shorter nose saddles, I think it's, it's more important to make sure everything is right. It's a very exciting time to be into saddles and that's something I never thought no. I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so that is me and my product for this month. Um, who's next? That leaves me. That does leave yes, you, Yes, it, it does. And I've got a product that is now celebrating its 10th anniversary, okay? It's a jersey that I'm quite happy to say revolutionized cycle clothing in the last 10 years. It definitely did. This is the new fourth generation Castelli Gabba. Is it the fourth, is the it? The fourth generation, wow, okay. that's right, yes. So it's been 10 years since this was discussed um, while they were working with one of their sort of like proteins, the Cervelo test team. And it came about as a jersey to be used for racing when it's wet and cold. And since then, it has basically blown up. So it's been around and it has basically been the jersey that I have used constantly when it's wet and cold in this country for almost since it came out. I bought the, I actually bought the first one that when it came out, uh, it was so good. I think I only got rid of it last year. I mean, um, there were a fair few of these blacked out that were yeah. being worn at World Champs just a few weeks ago. Well, it's interesting enough. So it was the San Remo race in 2013, 2013 yes. where the, the riders rather than the teams, because the teams didn't want it to happen, were blacking out the logo themselves. Yeah. But it's this year that Castelli have brought out the blacked out edition, the black so version. That's their new celebration one because they yes. did one of those back then as well. So where it actually got sold with a little black Sharpie so you could actually like paint it yourself. A bit about this anyway. So this is now functionally waterproof. So that's the one thing about the Gabba. It's a functionally waterproof jersey. So it's made of a brand new Gore-Tex windstopper fabric. It's now called Infinium Windstopper or Infinium and there's two different versions on this jersey. So there's an Infinium 205 on the front and Infinium 203 on the back. So by functionally waterproof, yeah. do you mean it's waterproof? Basically, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, it's not 100% waterproof. Yeah, um, water resistant. It's got, the, the, the fabric itself is a three layer like Gore-Tex windstopper fabric with the Infinium in the middle. There is a DWR treatment on the jersey as well. So it has got that water resistant and water repellent coating on there. But this new fabric, especially the stuff on the front, is very, very, very water resistant. So it's functionally waterproof. They can get away with saying that because if you're out on, the, on a ride, you know, you shouldn't get to a point where this gets completely soaked through. Um, they've had, or they, the only area that they found they had problems with was the shoulder seam, and now that is taped completely. So this whole front is very, very protective. So that's the biggest thing. But there's not quite as much stretch on the front, so there's a little bit of stretch, but it doesn't sort of move around too much, which is why they've got that 
thinner, lighter weight 203 on the back, which does have almost the same protection. So it's still fully win windproof, um, but it's got much more stretch to it. So it's a very comfortable jersey as well. So there's a few different features on it as well. They've gone from three pockets to two bigger pockets because it's easy to use when you've got gloves on. And there's another little pocket inside this one here so you can put your pump in and everything else keeps it out of the way. Is that a nice bit of reflective? Yes, absolutely. Reflective coating or reflective on the bottom area of the jersey on this. And there's lots of really nice colours. There's five different colour options and there's available in both men's and women's. So the one thing that we talked about earlier is obviously uh, Castelli now market this under their Perfetto range. And a lot of people were a bit confused as what is a Gabo, what's Perfetto. Perfetto is the name of the range of like weather resistant clothing that they use now under the ROS bracket, rain or shine. And the Gabba is the short sleeve version. So it only, if you talk about a Gabba, you talk about the short sleeve version. Everything else is just Perfetto. So that's the one way to actually sort of like to, to know the difference between them. It's a fantastic piece of kit. I've already been riding in this quite a bit and it's been sort of very, very good to use. Short sleeve, the Gabba is £170. Okay. Um, there's a long sleeve version at 195 and then a convertible. So one where you can actually zip the arms off and it's about £225 for that. You know, I don't, I don't use a waterproof jacket. If I'm only out for a shorter ride, there's no point. Use one of these. This will get you through, and it's thermal as well. So, it, yeah. you know, like I said, it, it's almost like for three quarters of the year you can get away with wearing this. So you don't need to spend all the money on another jacket as well. That does it for us uh, and Tech of the Month. Now we go to something very exciting with Rupert Radley, and that is Bike of the Month. Yes, we do. This is a Basso Diamante. So. I've been testing this. Uh, this is a custom build. So I got a frame set sent in to me by Basso. Um, and you went a bit mad, didn't you, really? <laughs> because this yeah, bike looks did. stunning. I was so jealous. When you pulled yeah. this out of the box, I was like... Yeah, I went a bit... I went, some might say overboard, but... You, you know, it's, it's, the an Italian Italian it's an Italian bike, and I kept it very Italian with uh, Campagnolo Super Record 12 speed EPS <laughs> <laughs> and a pair of fulcrum carbon disc brake wheels. In fact, the only thing that isn't Italian is the Pro saddle and the Turbo Cotton tyres. So, really, it should have been a pair of Pirellis, but mm. I went for the Turbo Cottons because then. And maybe a Physique saddle. Physique saddle. Maybe I'll swap it round now. Yeah. Um, but this bike is uh, very interesting. Okay. I mean, it's interesting to look at. It's quite pretty, isn't it? Yeah, but it's so distinctive yeah. in its design. Um, exactly what you're pointing at is that kind of cutaway head tube yeah. with then spacers underneath. So if you were to run that slammed, I don't think I would still be able to walk. <laughs> to be honest, look how low that would be. I mean, uh, amazing. That it looks amazing. so good. It's insane. Because this is Basso's all round bike. Okay. So you would compare this potentially to the specialised tarmac and bikes like that. It looks so distinctive. It does. And to the them. rear triangle is, just looks so compact it's and tight, doesn't it? So, the main thing I noticed when testing this was that it is very small, it's really compact. And that's a size large. Is it really? Okay. Does not look like a size no, large, it doesn't does at it? All. Um, the the chain stays on this bike are only four hundred and two millimeters long. Most disc brake bikes will come with a four hundred and ten millimeter chain stay. Um, so this is, has a really compact rear end, um, as you were saying, probably crit racing kind of background, yeah. um, which I don't do. So on my really long endurance rides. <laughs> This was <laughs> You've been on the limit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Round corners. Great round corners. Yeah. yeah. So um, what is it like to ride? Um, ag aggressive, I would say. It's quite uh, jarring. So the ride quality isn't as good as other high-end GC bikes. It doesn't have the same numbed quality that the Specialized Tarmac has and other types of bikes, potentially because of the drop seat stays. Um, it's quite harsh. You feel the road a lot, and the front end especially is is harsh. So you really feel the bigger bumps. Yeah, it's really fast. This was the fastest accelerating bike I've ridden this year, probably, um, and 
it goes around corners very well, but doesn't go down long straight hills very well because it's so short. It's very like you so get not very stable. You get a lot of wobbling mm -hmm. on the go when it's long straight hills, and you feel sort of perched on top of it. This is the Campagnolo 12-speed Super Record Group set. So it's EPS version, so it's brand new. It was launched this year in EPS form. Um, and it's very good. It's really good. Uh, it's very different to SRAM's 12-speed group set. Uh, it's very... You can't really... You couldn't describe it as traditional when they launched it because nobody had gone to 12-speed yet, but now it's looking quite traditional compared to what right. SRAM have done um, because the cassette remains very close together. Single tooth jumps all the way up to the seventh sprocket. It's not the crazy range of gears that SRAM have done. Um, but it's lovely design. I mean, the finish on the crank set is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and it shifts very well. The levers feel amazing. It's something about Campag levers and the yeah. way they change gear. It's just... It's amazing. And even it's though a nice feeling. this is an electronic group set, it feels like their mechanical one, which I've also ridden yeah. quite a lot. They've really retained the kind of mechanical feel to it, which is really nice. So as you can imagine, it's quite an expensive bike in the way I've built it up. £3,499 for the frame. Uh, the Campag group set comes in at over four grand, <laughs> <laughs> which makes it the most expensive group set on the market. By far. Right now, by far. More expensive than the frame. That's yep. crazy. Yep, and then... Well, you've got to change gear, haven't you? You've oh, got to, yeah, yeah. true, true, yeah, I forgot and about that. And then the wheels are £1,899. Great, thanks, Rupert. That is Bike of the Month, the Basso bike, which is... Very, very good looking, but very, very expensive. And uh, if there's any products or bikes that you would like us to feature over the next couple of months, well, do let us know in the comments section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe our Cycling Weekly YouTube channel. Also, not forgetting to click the notification bell so you actually see our great content. Um, but until then, we'll see you next time. Um, whilst Rupert's quiet down. <laughs> so much noise! <laughs> yeah. um, Do you want to start again? Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> sorry! <laughs> sorry! <laughs>